you're imagining this as a table, right, and you're like slicing it in the middle in a horizontal manner, and you take that piece and throw it in a table, and you take the other piece and throw it in another table, so you're like you're horizontally partitioning. What you're gonna do is you vertically this time slice your table. You take now columns al along with all its rows and put them in a table, and you take that huge ugly blob column with all its rows and you put it in another table what is up guys i am here in beautiful delmar uh for the new year it's first of january and uh this is another vlog happy new year i hope i can give you a decent audio quality uh Accuse the waves behind me crashing. I might be able to do something with the uh, audio quality after that. And in this video, I want to talk about, I want to record a quick vlog to talk about a very interesting concept in software engineering called partitioning, specifically database partitioning. I don't know why I actually had to prefix it with databases, but there might be other type of partitioning that you can do, I guess, and stuff. I'm not sure what are the other type of partitioning, but yeah, let's say, so yeah, let's, let's say we're going to talk about database partition. And what is that? And why did we invent such technology? There's always a reason in any software engineering tech that we build. There's always a reason behind it. So let's, let's start with that. Why? Why do we have partitioning to begin with? The reason is... Here's the problem. You have a database. Duh. All right, and then there is a table, okay? And this table is growing large and large and large, right? It's, in, it's it, let's, let's, let's simplify things and let's say you have one database only, right? One instance, and this database, and this table is growing large. I don't know what you're managing here. Logs data, probably customer data. I don't know, but it's, it's growing really large. 3 million, 4 million rows, 5 million, 50 million, right? And uh, so naturally, an admin would, would add indexes. Hopefully, you added indexes before and you know what kind of execution path your applications are exercising and you add indexes to that and that's fine. But even with indexes, indexes are data structures, right? It all depends on what kind of indexes. Let's say you're using B3. That B tree is a structure, and that goes large, right? That needs to be maintained, and yeah, it's gonna compared to the, the to the table size, it's smaller. But the larger the data, the more indexes, the more the, the larger the index size becomes, right? So that's kind of problem. So what do we do? What can we do? Well, there's one solution. Let's make my table a little bit smaller. It's like, what? How? How do we make our table smaller? Well, let's split up the tables. Let's say split up the table by rows. And that's this one kind of partitioning, guys, right? So it's like split by row. Rows from, I don't know, from 0 to 100,000 goes to this table. And from 100,001 to 200,000 goes to this table. And 200 and 300 goes to this table and so on. And now you have, okay, you have now more manageable tables. All right, so now we have multiple tables, right? And then each table will have still the same index, right? Now it's smaller tables, so we get in smaller indexes, so speed, fa uh, queries are faster. But here's the problem. How do I know which partition or which table to hit, right? I'm, I'm searching customer 102, right? Well... In this case, you are using certain partitioning key to determine which partition to hit, right? And that's called the partition key, right? You're partitioning on the customer ID in this case. And this is one kind of partitioning. It's called partitioning by range. You're, you're using a range, and each range goes to a specific partition or specific table, right? So that's called partition. And the, the type of partitioning I describe now is called horizontal partitioning, right? 
The reason it's called horizontally because you're, if you're imagining this as a table, right, and you're like slicing it in the middle in a horizontal manner, and you take that piece and throw it in a table, and you take the other piece and throw it in another table, so you're like you're horizontally partitioning. And still, guys, we're in the same instance. It's the same disk. It's the same, not necessarily the same disk, same host, same machine, right? You're just splitting stuff into the same table, and that's still beneficial. We're not talking about sharding. Sharding a little bit different. We made a video about sharding. Gonna make it reference it here or here. I don't know how cards work, right? So yeah. So that's called horizontal partitioning. So there are like another other types of horizontal partitioning by range and by lists and, and, and hash table and, and and composite. I'm not gonna talk about those, but let's talk about the other type of partitioning. It's called vertical partitioning. Right, so what? Why do we need this vertical partitioning thing? So, vertical partitioning is is the ability still same thing. You're breaking the table into multiple tables, but now this time you're breaking it vertically. So, what does that mean? You're not breaking it by row, but you're breaking it by columns. Okay. So, example. Why would you need this to do this? Right. Here's one example. You have a table. It has a bunch of fields, a customer ID, and uh, a name, right? And uh, a blob field. And that blob field, I don't know, have that maybe a customer documents, right? Who cares, right? It's a blob field. And you rarely ever search on that blob field at all, if, if any, right? And here's the thing, your table, this huge table, lives in a table space, and that table space lives in your precious, beautiful SSD drive, which is expensive, and you bought that SSD drive, and it's, and it's consuming your precious disk storage to store this damn blob that you don't even use, you rarely use. Here's where our vertical partitioning can be effective. What you're gonna do is you vertically this time slice your table in half, doesn't really have to be in half, but you take now that two columns or three columns al along with all its rows, them rows, and put them in a table. And you take that huge, ugly blob column with all its rows, and you put it in another table, preferably in a different table space where that table space point, I don't know, to your D drive, where your D drive is a slow ass hard drive that it has a spinning stuff, right? And I don't know, seven terabyte, right? And hey, your problem is solved because now if you search for your customer, you know you only want your name, you're gonna pull that up. But if you search for your customer and you want the blob, you're gonna have that slow stuff, right? And that's okay because how often do you pull up the customer's document, right? Maybe it's very rare, and users can wait a few more seconds to do that. Hey guys, this is me post-production editing. Uh, one note I wanna mention on uh, partitioning is the clients that do, do the query on these tables, they are agnostic of these partitions. That means they do not Usually, this is usually true in most database systems. So when you make a query against a table, if it has partitions, you kind of are unaware as a client from your SQL statements that are partitions. You don't specifically put that logic in your in SQL statement, right? You don't select from this table versus this table or this partition versus this partition. To you, it's still one view Right? And the database management system will take care of kind of deciding the path of execution and what partition to hit based on several criteria. So that's a point I wanted to add, right? I forgot after, I remember that after the fact I recorded the video. So back to the video. So we talked about partitioning, we talked about horizontal partitioning, we talked about horizontal partitioning, there are multiple types, or so by range, the rows, you can do by range or by lists, right? It says, hey, I want all the rows that have a field value of France to go on this partition, and all the rows that has a field value, like city or whatever, called the, uh, 
I don't know, Paris, not Paris, France, Paris, California. <laughs> I don't know why I talk about that. So to go to this column, San Diego goes to this, all right? And so on, right? So you get the idea. All right, nine minute video. I just wanted to make a vlog about this. Um, Happy New Year, guys. I'm gonna see you in the next one. You guys stay awesome.